Wouldn't it be cool to take a look on your bid eggs while you're outside or somewhere else and you don't have direct connectivity to your home? Well, let's fix that, shall we? So here we go guys, we are on the PC or we will be shortly on the PC and before we do start I want to give you a quick disclaimer. This video will be a little bit more technical, I will not just show off things but we will rather dive into the command line, we will connect ourselves to a server or if you do have something like a Raspberry Pi at home you can also use something like that and we will install things on it. Primarily we will dive into Docker, so if you don't know what Docker is there will be a video link down below from Network Chuck who does awesome videos when it comes to networking and everything else. And just make sure to check them out because then you know what I'm talking here about. But be careful, we will get a little bit more technical here when it comes to um, how to surf stuff at home, etc. PP. So yeah, this will be a bit more technical on that end and you need a little bit of knowledge into that. If you want me to do further videos about this and maybe in the future even do like entire series about home labbing and hosting your own stuff. I mean, I did a video about how to set up my own server at home and how I populated with all the hardware that I purchased for it and why I purchased all of these things. So yeah, I might go into that route as well because it's, it's so nice. I love it and I want to share all of that with you. But enough of that, now let's dive actually into setting up what we want to use today. So the software we want to take a look into today is Tailscale. What is Tailscale? Basically, if you need to put it into a couple of simple sentences, it is a virtual private network that you can set up yourself and that you can use to connect to other devices on different networks. Like you are going around with your phone somewhere in the city and you have something at home that is also connected to the same network over Tailscale. Now you can activate the software on your phone and you can actually connect to every single device that is connected to the network at home and the other part of the software. I think that's a really basic explanation of what you can do with Tayscale. There are way more options and opportunities and possibilities that you can have and do with Tayscale itself. But this is basically what it allows you to do. And this video here is not sponsored by Tailscale or anybody else. It is just me showing you guys on what I'm using to actually connect back home and take control over my bit eggs if anything is going on with them. Obviously, this does not give you the control of any device that is failing and needs to be manually rebooted or anything else, but you can access the dashboard, you can reboot the device and so on. So I think that's a really nice approach of how you can gain a little bit more access and control over your bidex even though you're not at home. Also a great part about Tailscale here is that parts of Tailscale are open source and I really love to see that because Tailscale itself is such a nice thing and having certain parts of it open source is just better for trust I guess and Tailscale itself is really a nice thing here. So I use this daily, I use this for plenty of features and now we want to take a look into what we do need to set this up and get you going with it. So the first thing is you obviously need a Tailscale account. And if you don't have one, check out the link in the video description down below. There you can create yourself an account. After that, you will see something like this dashboard if you do log in. And the cool part here is I can directly see all the IP addresses in my virtual private network of all of my devices. I can also see to what kind of account they are linked to and so on. So there are lots of information and we also see there are some things like subnets, exit nodes and so on. So, well, it, it can get a little bit technical here, but for most of you guys, I think a basic setup is totally enough because if you have a usual router and you have like one network and you don't use VLANs or any other networking parts around there, then setting up Tailscale and getting your phone connected is super easy because on your phone, you can download the Tailscale app. It is out for iOS and Android. And then at home, you need something to run it on. And in the introduction, I said, maybe you have a Raspberry Pi. Well, if you don't know what to do with your Raspberry Pi, here's the perfect thing of what you can do with it. You can use it 
as a node to connect to your very own Tailscale network. So be aware, Tailscale itself, they do have like managing servers. And if you make connections from your phone to your home and then into your BitX, the traffic itself will not go over Tailscale because it will be a peer-to-peer -peer connection between your node or your endpoint that you have at home and your client device. But the initial sequence of, well, I need to establish a connection with this endpoint will be routed over Tailscale. So Tailscale itself, they cannot track any of your traffic or anything else. So there's nothing to worry about on that end because they do rely on WireGuard. And the next thing is you could technically, there are open source solutions, you could technically open source and uh, self-host this at your own server. If you have a VPS cloud and you have a client that is sitting around there, you could set up something there. But we are already getting a little bit too technical in here. I just want to briefly show you how easy it is to set this up. So the first thing in here that we need to do is we need to be on the machines tab. And here we can click on add device. You have two options. You can either choose client device, which will be your Windows, Linux, or Mac device that you do have. And you have the option for Linux server. This is what we want to use today. And what we can do here is we can set up plenty of things, but you don't need to change here anything. Maybe one thing that you need to change is the off key expiration, because this is kind of bad if your node at home is expiring its key every couple of days. So you can only set a maximum of 90 days, but later on I'll show you how you can deactivate that entirely because you don't need to re-authenticate your node that you have at, at home. At least that's what I believe. So I have disabled that on the node that I do run at home. But basically that's it. We could give it some tags, we could set some other things here. You also have the option to set it as an exit node. And I want to quickly explain that to you. So you probably have heard terms like, well, you need to use a VPN to be totally secure, yada, yada, you know, on other videos. Well, the only thing that gets secured if you use a VPN is the traffic where you flow to. So um, it's not entirely protecting you from anything bad or malicious stuff. So if you still open up websites with malware or any viruses that you do download, you still get them. They will not protect you from that. But an exit node is basically doing the same. So you could technically set up an exit node at home. And when you with your phone connect to this, or even with your MacBook or Linux PC or whatever, and you're at some other remote location and you connect to your Tailscan network and the device detects, hey, I do have an exit node in my private network, then it will route all the traffic, go through that node, and your IP address will be the IP address of your exit node. So if I'm at work and I connect to my Tailscan network, I use the exit node that I do have at home. And if I open up emails or if I open up a website, it will appear to this website that I use the IP address that I do have at home. So you get the point, you can use this to change your IP address. So you don't use your mobile phone IP address, but you use the IP address that you do have at home. It's a nice feature and uh, you could click on use as exit node. You can activate that if you want to. You don't need to, but we will have a setting for that anyway in Docker because we will use Docker. So the next thing that we want to do is generate install script. And if you now scroll down and see that here, it will give us a script. Screw that, you don't need that. The only thing that you actually need is you need to copy the TS key off, which is this string here. Yeah, you just need to copy this key. And if we quickly do that and copy that, we can hop over to the terminal and do some magic over there. But before we do that, there's also another web page, which I will link in the description down below as well. And by the way, while we're down on the video description below, you could also think about leaving me a comment and telling me what you think about this and if you actually plan on using that. Also, if you have any ideas or questions about BitX and all around home mining, make sure to leave them there as well. So this right here is the documentation for how to set this up using Docker, uh, primarily Docker Compose. Docker Compose is basically you can write a file and you put some stuff in there and then you 
use Docker and it does everything automatically. You don't need to use some hacky thingies. So I'll put this web page in the video description down below as well so that you can directly pick that. So now we are in the terminal and what we can do in here is we can first just create a folder. I just named this tail scale and then I cd into tail scale. And in here, what we can do is we can create ourselves a new file and we call this docker-compose.yaml. A YAML file is uh, just a file that you need to use for Docker Compose to be recognized and then it can do everything. And what we want to do is we want to grab this right here, paste it into that. And now I told you the only thing that you actually need is the TS authentication key. So let's quickly use the TS authentication key here, put it in here. Whoops. I need to eliminate that line. So we quickly just remove what we have in here. We paste it in here. We have set the advertise tag to container. You could change this to exit node. So from container to exit dash node, and then it would work. Now we're doing everything in the command line or in the terminal. There are other tools like Portainer where you can do everything in web like you can add containers in here. If you're into that and want to know a little bit more about that, leave me a comment down below, guys. I'm so happy to explain more of these things to you. Home labbing is so much fun and it's addict. It is really addictive. So let's go back into the terminal itself. And basically we are done now. So let's press control O to save this. Say yes, control X to exit out of it. And we can now run Docker compose app and I use the dash D command to make sure that it runs in the background. So now it has run tail scale. It has been set up. And if we go back over to tail scale and take a look on machines, we should be able to see a new machine in just a couple of seconds. Let's quickly check what tail scale itself is telling us. You see the tag container are invalid or not permitted. So we have done an issue in the Docker Compose. So we do Docker Compose down here. And it's good that I'm doing some, some bad things here because guys, we want to experience everything. Uh, I can just eliminate that entire line. I use control K to do that. And everything else should be the same now. So now we do that and for that, purpose of actually seeing the locks here. I want to do Docker Compose app without the dash D to see what exactly is going on. And we see connected. If I now take a look here, we see tail scale engine X just got connected. So everything is up and running. And now the only thing that is left to do is take a look on our phone. So here we are on my phone. And as you do see, I already do have the tail scale app open. So the next thing that we actually need to do is we need to click on login. It will ask us if we want to log in and we will be prompted with the login screen of Tailscale. And as you do see in the top right corner of my screen, we are using the mobile phone internet and not connected to any Wi-Fi. I don't know why it takes that long. So let's quickly do that again. And here we go. So the next thing that I can actually do is I can sign in, either you use your email address or I myself use Google. It's just for the purpose of uh, doing that and showing it to you. So we click on connect. And so after we are logged in here, we do see we have exit node up here and we can actually click on enable that. And if I now go over to the web interface and reload this, I can see that it gives me an IPv4 address and I'm now using the address for my home. So if I now go over and type in any of the IP addresses of my BitX, I can see that it should load. Let's try that again. We see that we are connected to it. And if I now go over to logs, I can see the real time logs. So one last thing I haven't showed you in here in the web interface is if you do see the node, and in my example, it is this tail scale dash nginx. 
I can come over to these three dots and click on enable or disable key expiry. So that basically is how easy it is to set this up and disable the key expiry for this note because you want to have this running every single day to every hour on your home network so that you can connect to it, which is a great thing. Otherwise, you would need to do all the things that we just did previously another time to make sure it is authenticated. Technically, you could also remove all the tags like using this as an exit node and other things like subnets. And then you could re-authenticate it with a new key, but we don't want to do that. So we just disable that. Also, when it comes to those of you who are a little bit more technical, what you can do is you can set up subnets. So if I click into that, we do see I have my 10.0.0.0 slash 8 subnet enabled for that. So what this device does is it only allows to be seen and only to route traffic for me in my particular subnet, which is handy and needed because then I can also access things like my start nine node, which is only exposing things locally in the network and not to the public world. So with that, I think it is a super easy setup on how to get started with setting everything up and using Tailscale as an option for you to go outdoors and yeah, just enjoy being able to connect from anywhere remote back home to your services. So this not only works with BitX, but also with other services like your image server or your file server or whatever you do have. So it is really a nice thing to use. And as I said, if you do have a Raspberry Pi or you have a server at home that you use anyway, or maybe you don't use the Raspberry Pi, now you do have something to use it for because running Docker on a Raspberry Pi is super easy and uh, you can just connect to your things back home. That's it for today's video. I thank everybody for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. If so, don't forget to give me a thumbs up so I know you like that stuff. Till then, see you on the next one and keep on hashing.